Hi, this is Denise Matthew. I hope you're doing well. We're here today to talk about the full moon happening on December 8th, 2022, and it will be happening at 16 degrees Gemini. This full moon is going to be happening in the same sign that Mars has been retrograding. So this is going to have a connection with the energy of Mars, and that will play out with the transits. We'll be seeing that with the, um, the placement of Mars. This is also where we're introduced to the gate 10, and it's interesting because thematically it plays into this, this full moon. And then later in the month on December 23rd, it will be making another appearance in the next new moon that we're having. So this really is talking about the idea of loving ourselves. And when we do love ourselves, we can be more tolerant of the extremes of humanity. We're going to have the full 35, 36 emotional channel activated, which means that this will bring more passion and even more of this idea of emotional energy connected to this full moon and going forward until the 21st. This is passion to have things happen, to have experiences in our lives. It could even be about romance. It can be about uh, sexuality. It could be about anything related to brand new experiences, things that we haven't experienced before. But the other perspective is this might be showing us the experiences that we may need to have in our lives to give us a full rounded experience of being alive. The 3536 channel is the talent in the experience for our human existence. It does activate the solar plexus globally. So we will have the activation of Saturn in the gate 49, even more prevalent than before. And I'll talk about that as we go through the energy of the full moon. So let's get into the details. So this full moon will be happening in the gates 35 and also the gate five. And this will be more impactful potentially for anybody with the gates 5, 15, 35, and 36. And it might be helpful to see where this full moon is going to be happening in your astrology birth chart, because that can give you more of a dimension of what themes or what part of your life it will be playing out in. So we have the earth and the moon in the gate 35 line 5 and Mars is also going to be very close by in the gate 35 line 6 and Neptune will be in the gate 36 as it has been for a very long time and as I said this will bring us the full 35 36 channel of transitoriness and it's going to be in an emotional wave for the globe. Emotional energy can amp up the desire to just jump into something new without thinking it out, especially if someone has told you that you should do it, because there might be a lot of people giving us input into how they feel we should run our lives or what we should be doing in our lives. We also have a lot of fifth line energy within this full moon, which means there's going to be potential for more projection. And that is once again, where people are saying and expecting things from us based on their projection or their feeling of what we can give them, but it may not necessarily connect with what we're willing to give them. So it's important to keep the communications open as much as possible so that everybody's on the same page and nobody's expecting something and getting frustrated because they haven't received it. With the earth in the gate 35 line 5 altruism, this comes with potential for people to pressure you into some kind of new opportunity because they know that you have the experience to do it. And also, it might somehow work to their advantage. So keep in mind that this new opportunity may not be what's best for you. And instead, it might be best for them to meet their goals. So anything that shows up, new experiences in your life, looking at how you're going to be impacted by it and what you're getting from it is really important, especially around this full moon and going forward in the next two weeks. And Mars in the gate 35, line 6, brings even more of a theme of pressure for you to take an opportunity that may not necessarily fulfill you. This can show up as having a new opportunity that gives you a better title, more money, or some kind of an elevation, but it also comes at the cost of maybe you're not as satisfied or as happy doing this new opportunity, this new job, or even a new relationship because there are too many things that are not necessarily feeling good for you to take on. Mercury's in the gate 10, line 4, as I mentioned, and it's in detriment here. The gate 10 is a roll gate or a gate that brings the theme specific to each profile line. So in other words, 
the fourth line of the gate 10 is connected to fourth line profiles and that could be design side or even personality side but you might notice it more in your personality so because the gate 10 is a roll gate it means that there's potential for it to connect to a lot of fourth line energy so if you have a fourth line in your profile a 2-4 profile, 1-4, a 4-1, a 4-6, or even if you have fourth lines in your body graph, you might feel this full moon a little bit more intensely. Another important part of the gate 10 is it is part of the integration circuit, and this is going to mean that if you have all or part of the integration circuit, the gate 10, the gate 20, the gate 34, or the gate 57, once again, you might hook into this energy, and it may feel quite impactful for you in some way. That's not to say it's negative. It just means that it may show up as something more tangible in your life. And as I mentioned, I am focusing more on Mercury for this moon because it seems to herald in the energy for the new moon happening on December 23rd, where the sun and the moon will be revisiting the energy of the gate 10 line four. It's not necessarily uncommon to have gates repeated in moons going forward. But what is uncommon is that it is going to be in the exact line that it's in in Mercury, and it's also going to be the exact space where the, uh, the new moon will be happening. So the gate 10 line four is called the opportunist, and the message that this brings is it says that instead of letting go of something because your friends or social group tell you that you should, it might be better to hold on to it and wait for a better opportunity that fits you perfectly. So once again, this theme of listening to your own inner knowing or your own intuition is key to navigating the energy. It might be to hang on to a relationship, work, or even a business partnership, and eventually something new will open up. That doesn't mean that if something is terribly toxic that you shouldn't let it go. But if there's an opportunity for you to just hang on a little bit longer and wait for something to show up, that's the energy of the fourth line way. And that's what it's encouraging us to do. And the reason why you would want to hold on to an opportunity is once again saying that this new opportunity may not be a perfect fit for you. It may want you to conform in a way that you feel like you probably can do, but then when you get into the opportunity, you might say, no, this isn't for me. I really can't do this anymore. And you've lost the other opportunity. Alternatively, it could be taking an opportunity or a new relationship or something new that seems like it's pretty good, but then later on, when you're all settled into this new opportunity and it's not as great as you thought, something even better that you were hoping for shows up in your trajectory, but now you're sort of stuck where you are and you can't go anywhere. So again, this is all about waiting and that is the gate five that is featured in this full moon as well. Now the sun is in the gate five, line five, which is called joy. And this rounds out the energy by reinforcing the message of Mercury in the gate 10, line four, where the phrase is waiting is an aspect of enlightenment. Much like the gate 54, line four, which we'll see later in the month, the gate 5.5 is a special line that encourages you to align with your personal flow because if you do, it might put you on a trajectory where an unexpected opportunity drops into your lap. With Uranus in the gate two line three, you might get the impression that you have to get moving in a new direction, especially if people are encouraging you to do so. The theme for the gate two is about being receptive to what is correct for you and that right direction only comes from a place inside you, not others. This is about your internal guidance, your intuition, and seeing that your internal voice is the only true voice that can lead you on the correct path for you. And with Mars retrograde, being rash or quick to shift course may feel like the right thing to do, but it may not work to your advantage. So carefully and well-researched plans will serve you well. It doesn't mean that there will be no opportunities that will show up in your trajectory because there very well may be, but it does mean to use your discernment to decide your path forward. Overall, the key is to align with your truth despite what people say or do. Finding peace and calm and remaining in your own personal flow despite the expectations of others is how you will flourish and grow going forward for the next couple of weeks and into 2023. Globally, the full moon has an abundance of fifth line and sixth line energy, which I mentioned which can point at unexpected and mutative events and shifting patterns being introduced into the collective. With the 3536 channel activating the global solar plexus, 
the energy of the gate 49 line to the last resort can be more prominent and bring energy for revolution and support. This is where all the ways and avenues to find a peaceful resolution to conflict are exhausted before taking action. Or alternatively, leaders have no patience to accommodate the people they are leading, move ahead with plans that no one really wants. Overall, the message for this full moon is to take your time, align with your inner knowing. Despite what people say or do, you know what's correct for you and what isn't. If you do and you put your trust in yourself, then the universe can lead the way to your best opportunity. You deserve the best. So trust your gut. Well, that's it for now. And I hope you have a great full moon. Until next time, take care and I'll see you again soon.